Hey there and welcome back to my crash course on system design. I'm here to kickstart your system design interview preparation. In this video we're going to talk about why modern systems always have a whole range of different databases, what kind of databases exist and how to pick the right one depending on the use case. If you're unsure if the system design interview applies to you at all, I have prepared a quiz that will help you to find out in no time. Based on three to four simple questions, it determines the likeliness to get one in your interview process. Based on your answers, it also provides you a personalized preparation strategy. You find the link to the quiz in the video description below. Before we get to the hands-on portion of this video, let's first find out why it's a best practice that each service in a modern system architecture has its own database. First, data isolation. Each service has its own unique set of data and requirements. By separating databases, we ensure that the data of one service remains isolated from others. This isolation provides several benefits. First, this minimizes the risk of data corruption or accidental modification. And second, it allows each service to define its own data models and schemas, tailored specifically to its needs. And third, it enhances security by limiting access to specific databases and thereby reducing the potential impact of a breach. Scalability and performance. In a shared database scenario, multiple services accessing the same database can lead to connection and performance issues. As the system scales and the workload increases, conflicts may arise when multiple services try to update the same data simultaneously. And each service might have different user patterns, read-write ratios and scalability requirements. By separating databases, we can optimize performance for each services individually, ensuring better scalability and avoiding bottlenecks. Loose coupling and independence. Sharing a database creates tight coupling between services. Changes made by one service can have unintended consequences on others. With separate databases, each service can evolve independently, making it easier to modify, test and deploy new features without impacting the entire system. Loose coupling fosters flexibility and really promotes like a microservice architecture, where each service can be maintained and updated independently without disrupting the entire system. However, like always in system design, there are some cases where you can't fully decouple services. For example, in Twitter's architecture, you typically have a single database where tweets are being written to by a tweet service and another query service that accesses the same database to retrieve all the tweets. Nevertheless, by following the best practices of spinning up independent databases for your services, you can create a robust and flexible architecture that can adapt to future changes and growth. Let's explore how we can translate this theoretical knowledge into drawing better system diagrams. Before we dive in, you best download my free component library so you can create your own system architecture diagrams alongside this video. You find the link in the video description below. Now let's walk through the three services we already know from the previous video and focus this time on their storage requirements. The user service. This kind of service handles user related information and ensures a seamless user experience. Typically it is responsible for managing user profiles, account settings, authentication and authorization. It would also handle tasks such as user registration, login and profile updates. To do so, the service utilizes a user database to store and retrieve user-related data efficiently. The Product Catalog Service The Product Catalog Service in Amazon's architecture is responsible for managing the vast catalog, which includes information about various products such as titles, descriptions, images, pricing, customer reviews and other related attributes. It handles tasks such as product creation, update product details, retrieve product information and facilitate efficient product search and recommendation functionalities. The payment service. When a user adds products to their cart 
and proceeds to checkout. The user interface sends a request to the payment service and the payment service securely handles the payment process by communicating with external payment providers such as PayPal or Stripe. It encrypts the payment details, uh, authorizes the transaction and ensures the secure transfer of funds between the user and the merchant. Only the user and the catalog service come with their own databases and that's why only those two will be focused for today. To make the call which kind of databases would be best for each use case, you should know the two buckets databases can fall into. They can be either relational or non-relational databases. We're going to start with the relational ones because this kind of database is already around for more than 50 years and there's no sign that they're going to go out of business anytime soon. Relational databases organize data in a structured manner with tables, rows and columns enabling efficient data management and retrieval. And they support relationships between tables using primary and foreign keys, facilitating the representation of complex data associations. With the standard query language or SQL for short, relational databases empower users to perform powerful and flexible data retrieval including filtering, sorting, aggregation and joins between tables, leading to valuable insights from the data. Besides those functional properties, relational databases also support strong consistency. Strong consistency ensures that all servers of your system always reflect the latest state of your data, no matter how many updates and changes are being made to it. Each user sees exactly the same snapshot of data. So what do you think? For which of the two services should we use the relational database? The relational database has survived over half a century due to its generic nature. It can carry pretty much any use case, at least to a certain level of scale. However, its strong consistency properties make it ideal for scenarios where data integrity and accuracy are crucial, such as in financial systems or user management. You clearly don't want the same financial transaction being executed twice or two users registering the same email address when creating a new account. A database with strong consistency prevents such events from happening by design. So the user service it is. We use the relational database for the user service. Oh, and if you want to dive deep on relational databases and learn how they scale, you can check out my video on that topic. You'll find a link right now in the top right corner. While relational databases excel in supporting a wide range of use cases, non-relational databases shine in their own niche. They offer flexible data models to handle diverse data structures, allowing for the accommodation of unstructured and rapidly changing data. Additionally, they provide schema flexibility enabling agile data modeling and easy adaption to evolving structures. NoSQL databases also provide tailored querying capabilities optimized for their specific data models, facilitating efficient data retrieval, filtering and aggregation operations. Another key aspect that differentiates them from relational databases is that they prioritize scalability, providing high performance solutions with distributed architectures. However, that comes at a cost. Most NoSQL databases don't come with strong consistency, but eventual consistency. Eventual consistency is a data consistency model where it might take a while till data is consistent across the whole system. This means different servers may temporarily have return different data for the same entry, but eventually all servers will converge to a consistent state again. Let's get back to our Amazon example and find out how our product catalog service would profit from a NoSQL database. I pick a key value store for this architecture. It's a viable choice for the product catalog service in Amazon's architecture due to a couple of unique attributes. For example, simplified data model. Key value stores offer a simple and straightforward data model where each item is identified by a unique key associated with a correlated value. This can have advantages for certain use cases with minimal data relationships and where data access primarily relies on key lookup. 
In case of the product catalog, we can store static data like title, description, category, and so on in a key value store. Due to the flexible schema, it becomes pretty easy to store product specific details like shoe size, movie length, or any other category specific detail without violating strict rules that would exist in a relational database. Key value stores are known for their high performance capabilities, especially when it comes to read and write operations. They excel at handling massive amounts of data and providing fast response times, making them suitable for scenarios with high data throughput and low latency requirements. Especially in e-commerce, low response times are super important because they directly translate into additional revenue. Once your pages start loading really slow, people simply close the tab and go somewhere else. Last but not least, scalability. Key value stores, like all the other non-relational databases, are designed for horizontal scalability, allowing for easy distribution of data across multiple nodes. They can handle large data volumes and high workloads, making them a good choice for scenarios where the product catalog is expected to grow rapidly or experiences significant traffic. A product catalog clearly needs the ability to scale to an extensive size even. At Amazon, for example, you do have a large user base, but what's even larger is the range of products that's being sold and added every day to their platform. But what about eventual consistency? In this use case, the impact is very minimal. There is no harm if it might take longer till product details are updated on all servers. Maybe some users see a new title, description or product detail earlier than others. But there isn't the same risk associated like with financial transactions or sensitive user data. And now I'm asking you, which NoSQL database would you have picked for the product catalog service? Let me know in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching this video till the end. If you don't want to miss any of my future videos, please subscribe and hit the bell. And if you're really serious about nailing your upcoming system design interview, I highly recommend you check out my online course on system design interview preparation. Thank you so much and see you around.